such a blessing to be here today. So thankful for the weather we're getting right now. It beats the heat quite a bit. Uh, this morning, well, actually, something's on my heart this morning that I read this morning. I wonder how many times I can say this morning. <laughs> Good morning this morning. Uh, I was reading this morning. There we go again. Earlier today, I was reading, and uh, I came across Psalm 127, and uh, since we've had Ruby, I've been completely obsessed with looking into um, fathering and uh, how God expects it, you know, and how he fathers. And, uh, you know, it wasn't an immediate uh, obsession, but God clearly revealed my lack and therefore revealed my need. And and thankfully, uh, I've been able to look into things. And, And anyways, earlier today, I read that psalm, and it was talking about how blessing uh, how much of a blessing children are, and it's twofold. It, it not only says that they were a blessing, but that they were arrows to be uh, uh, used against the evil one. And that's not what my message is this morning, but it's been on my heart, and uh, maybe it is for somebody, I don't know. But uh, it, it's not only that we've been blessed with children, but there is a, a divine and a holy purpose for those children to be raised and reared in such a way that they will be warriors for the Lord and that we would allow them to to be able and give them the tools to uh, carry on further than we ever could. So I, I praise God for that word this morning to me. Um, today, I do want to talk about seeds. And uh, I, heard it, I heard it preached one time or a preacher said one time that, you know, God can heal anyone in a single moment. And we see that in scripture. But for many of us, he gives us our healing as a seed. Now, that was interesting and a little uh, eye-opening when I heard that. It's nothing profound, but, you know, we see in scripture where many were healed just when Jesus said and the disciples said, and many were healed instantly. And a lot of times we expect to be healed instantly, and when we aren't, we get discouraged or can get discouraged. But in this faith, we've learned that, you know, everything is within God's timing. So uh, when I heard that statement, it really clicked with me because I had not been thinking about my healing as a seed. You know, I've had healing promised over me and and we've been diligent to wait and faithful uh, to wait on the Lord. And uh, I, I was just looking at it as waiting. But when I heard that, I realized God was looking at it as, what am I doing with that seed, that promise that he has planted within me? Am I cultivating ground in such a way where that can be fruitful? And uh, that kind of changed how I thought about that. And then it later changed how I thought about a lot of things. And I realized that everything is a seed. Everything we say and do or don't say and don't do, everything is planting and, and will reap some harvest. You know, just because the seed is bad doesn't mean there's no harvest. There's still a harvest. So, uh, real quick, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. says, Now remember this, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and he who sows generously, that blessings may come to others, will also reap generously and be blessed. You know, we, we, we know that we will reap what we sow. We shouldn't be surprised that when we reap fruit for good or, or for bad, either one, because we, can, we should be able to trace back and see what seed was planted. You know, if, if we're lacking spiritually, we can usually trace it back to neglecting something, to uh, getting busy with work, getting busy with other things, and, and putting uh, other things ahead of God which is an idol, and it's breaking his commandment. But we're all guilty of breaking the commandments. None, not a single one of us here have not, even though our desire is to please the Lord and be obedient and do everything we can to, uh, to live according to his way, because that's, that's, that's the desire in our heart. That's the seed that's been planted in our heart. Um, we also 
we'll reap what we allow to be sowed. Uh, turn to Matthew 13. In verse 24, we have the, the peril, parable of the wheat and the tare. 1324 says that Jesus gave them another parable considering to consider, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in a field. But while the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, resembling wheat, among the wheat and went away. You know, what's interesting is just in that little portion of text that we see that the enemy didn't do he didn't sow bad seed for any purpose other than to destroy the crop that he had planted. And we see that today, that when we sow good seed, when we are diligent, the enemy is still going to, without, without anybody's fault but, uh, or, or anything to provoke it, we can be right where we want to be and right where the Lord wants us to be, and the enemy can bring a thought. The enemy can bring an image. The, the enemy can bring... Uh, a situation that is only meant to destroy you and it's only meant to do nothing but wreak havoc in your harvest. Verse 26 says, So when the plants sprouted and formed grain, the weeds appeared also. The, servant, the servants of the owner came to him and said, Sir, do you, did you not sow good seed in the field? Then how do we have these weeds? And he replied that an enemy has come. The servant, asked, the servant asked him, then, do you want us to go and pull him? He said, no, because when you pull the weeds, you'll uproot the weed as well. So in this parable, we see that we will also reap what, not only what we sow, but what others sow. Uh, so if everything is a seed, and everything we do or everything we say and don't say is a seed for ourselves and for someone else because our words don't carry weight just within ourselves. Our words carry weight within others. You know, how we, um, how we react, not just our words, but our actions too, but how we react to a situation. Uh, well, you're planting something in somebody else. If you're within the ears of somebody else, their, their perception of you is doing something within them. You know, we, we have to be mindful that every, everything we say and do uh, is not uh, insignificant. We may, we may feel like, oh, well, that doesn't matter, or we may get lax a little bit and say that doesn't matter, but the reality is that it does. You know, we can, well, and, and not just what we say, but I have here that the same is true of our actions. You know, what we do with uh, the gifts God's given us or, or what we don't do with them. You can look at the parable of the, the, uh, the talents. You know, the master gave three servants uh, a measure of talents, and the first one was able to double the ten talents, and, you know, he invested and, and gained ten more. Uh, the second had five and, and invested and doubled it as well. And the one that, that was given one talent did not value the, the gift that the, that the master had given him. And so what he actually did was he buried it. He dug a hole and he planted that talent like a seed and it did not bear fruit. You know, there was, there was no increase. And we see that the master came back and called him wicked, took away uh, what he had given and uh, given it to, to those who were faithful. You know, we, we need to strive to be those who are faithful because we don't want to be the one who just buries and, and uh, is, is declared wicked. And that just, that's just not who we've been called to be. Um, since we're in Matthew 13, let's, let's turn back to verse 1. Now, I kind of want to look at I know I started by talking about seeds, but I kind of want to look at the other side of that, which it would be the soil. And uh, in this uh, parable, it's the parable of the sower. Um, Gary Thomas, in his book, 
he, uh, the sacred marriage said that, you know, that this, this particular parable is not a parable about seed. The seed is the good word, and it's constant within this parable, but the, the parable itself is about soil. You know, the sower came, and, and, and he sowed this good seed on multiple types of soil. So let's look at that real quick. Here in Matthew 13, verse 1, it says, The same day that Jesus went out of the house, and he was sitting by the Sea of Galilee, but such large crowds gathered around him, and he got to the boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood uh, on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen carefully, a sower went out and sowed seed into a field, and he sowed some seed, and it fell beside the road. And the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where, where they did not have much soil. And at once they sprang up because there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. And other seed fell on good soil and yielded grain. Some hundred, some a hundred times as much as was sown, some sixty and some thirty. And he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. You know, that, that's, we're, we're very familiar with this parable. We, we know the, the, the state of soil that, that we strive to be. You know, we, we, we strive to be the good soil where the fruit uh, that we bear is, a hundredfold or sixtyfold, you know, that, that we would allow God's seed to whatever it is. It, it, it's not just the, the good seed of the gospel, but, you know, he gives us many, many things. And we have many opportunities to, uh, to cultivate the ground and, and allow uh, the seed to, to, to grow and be fruitful. Uh, You know, later here in, in verse 18, Jesus gives an explanation. It says, listen then to the meaning of this parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand it, the evil one has come and snatched away what was sown in his heart. And this is the one in whom the seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom the seed was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and at once welcomes it with joy, yet he has no substantial root in himself, but it is only temporary. And when pressure or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he stumbles and falls away, abandoning the one who is the source of salvation. And the one on whom the seed was sown among thorns and is the one that, that hears the word, but the worries and the distractions of the world and its deceitfulness of riches choke out the word and yield no fruit. And of course, the one whom the seed is sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, and he indeed bears fruit and yields 100 times and 60 times and 30 times more. You know, it was the same seed sown in different um, environments. And... Every each environment created a different outcome. So we we can look at that and apply that to not just our salvation, but we can apply that to anything, and and, and we can apply it to uh, our healing. You know, our healing as a seed. What 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 soil have we cultivated for that promise? You know, uh, am I? Allowing the devil's word that that God is is a liar uh, to creep up in my mind and entertain those thoughts, or am I putting my faith on Him that that I know, even though there may be pain now, that that His promise is true, or am I allowing my suffering to be a witness to those looking on, and allowing God to plant seeds in them to see my faithfulness or do I allow them to see my unfaithfulness you know either way it's a seed either way there will be fruit it's either going to be good or bad we don't we don't 
we're not going to yield no fruit. It's going to be one or the other. You know, and it could be the same way with, with many things. You know, uh, we, we may lose a job. We may have car trouble. We may uh, be blessed with children. We may uh, be getting a promotion. There's many good and thing, bad things that happen in our lives that, that are either going to be a blessing or a trial. And if we can persevere through the trial, we have then cultivated the soil enough to where God can do good within what the enemy means for evil. Scripture says that, that, that he will do so if we persevere, that, that God can use our trial and turn it for good. You know, and if we're going to go through trials, which we will, why not persevere and allow God to use that? You know, we don't know. We, we never know what, what, uh, what God is doing. Our perception of things is, is very finite. You know, we, we perceive things as we see them. Well, we only have one perspective, and it's not God's, it's ours. But we need to trust in God's perspective and that when we think something is detrimental, when we're faithful and, and we put our trust in him, the truth is that he can turn it for good. And what we suffered may be exactly what somebody else needed to be pliable and, and allow the word of God to be planted in their heart. You may bring, you may bring people to salvation you never even met. And, and that's, that's the thing to consider, that... Everything we do, every reaction we have to a situation is not insignificant. There is either good or bad fruit from it. <clears throat> so we need to be considerate of, of what kind of soil we're cultivating. What, when God wants to plant something within our hearts, what, what have we prepared you know, you can't just go out here and, and, and throw seeds and expect a good crop. You, you have to actually cultivate the ground. You have to till it. You have to do a lot of work. We, we must be diligent to do the work up front because God wants to use us. You know, the, the, the time to train for war is not during war. You know, you, you need to train before the war comes. That way you're ready to fight the enemy. You're not going through basic training during the conflict or in the middle of the conflict. Here in Matthew 12, verse 33, you will see here that, that nothing is insignificant. No word we, we, we utter uh, and, and our actions aren't either. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for the tree is recognized and judged by its fruit. Jesus says that you brood of vipers, you can, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks out of which the heart is full. The good man from the inner good treasure brings out good things and the evil man from his inner evil treasure brings out evil things. And verse 36 says, but I tell you, on that day of judgment, people will have to give an account for every careless or useless word they speak. You know, we, we need to be mindful of what comes out of our mouth. We need to be mindful of how we react. We need to be mindful of, of what we would consider careless, you know, or, or, or insignificant, because they aren't. You know, how I react at work around the people I work with matters a great deal but it's easy to consider that it doesn't because they are not necessarily godly people but the truth is is they know I am and my reactions to a bad situation if I blow up in front of them that's the character I'm displaying that's what I am determining is a godly characteristic and we need to be careful that we're always mindful that the characteristics we display are the ones that Christ has. You know, he is our mirror. The word of God is a mirror. And uh, we, we need to look in it from time to time and really consider, and it's hard. It's hard to be honest with yourself. I think it's harder to be honest with yourself than anybody else. Because it's easy, it's easy for us to make excuses. We can excuse things away very easily. Uh, I'll wrap this up, and I want to wrap up in Hosea. <clears throat> Hosea 
Hosea 10, 12 says, So with a view to righteousness, that righteousness like a seed may germinate, reap in accordance with mercy and loving kindness. Break up your fallow ground, for it is a time to seek and search diligently for the Lord and to long for his blessings until he comes to reign righteousness and his gift of salvation upon you. You know, Jennifer came across this one day and she actually looked up fallow ground because uh, it was intriguing to her. And I looked it up last night because I remembered us talking about it a while back. And Webster says that the fallow means to plow or harrow or break up land without seeding to destroy weeds and to conserve soil mo moisture. You know, the instruction that this prophet gave uh, was to, to, to break up the fallow ground, to, to cultivate it in such a way because they had allowed evil to be sown. And the only thing that could be done with that soil was to break it up and to allow the weeds to be destroyed so that God may come in and plant seeds of righteousness and mercy. <clears throat> so we should consider what our soil looks like, what, what, um, what shape it's in. You know, and, and I'm, I'm referring to our heart and our character. You know, are, are there parts of us that are in worse shape than others? You know, if so, we must take the time to do whatever is necessary to cultivate it. Because if we don't, if we don't break up the fallow ground within our heart, then when the Lord does plant seeds or, or, or tries to, then there won't be soil good enough for them to really be fruitful, and we won't see the, the increase that he longs to give us. You know, he is a good father, and we are his children. And, and as being a father, I know how it feels when you look at your child. You know, and, and it's very interesting. I think the Lord has shown me or taught me more just within the, the first year of being a father than he did when I got married. I expected to have a, a, sh a shift in perspective uh, because, you know, through marriage, we're, we're displaying the, the shadow of Christ in the church. And every day we get to wake up, and, and that is the goal, is to treat my spouse the way Christ does the church. You know, and her goal is to, to treat me the way the church treats Christ. And, you know, it, it's, it's a wonderful and beautiful shadow that we have to, to look at. But becoming a parent has really uh, propelled what God has done within me and, and, and shaped a little bit more of, what, of how I look at things. And, and things are in a different perspective for me. So in saying that, you know, I really want to do a lot of self-examination. And I think it's important that we all do because God wants to work. God wants to do um, what he has set out to do. And he wants to do it through us, his people. And we know that his will will be accomplished either way. And I just pray that uh, we would be uh, willing and, and uh, just a, a, a willing and, and uh, empty vessel just, just waiting for the Lord. Uh, just like with the parable of the ten virgins, you know, there were some who were prepared and faithful, and when the bridegroom came, you know, they got to enter in. You know, I pray that that's us. Mm -hmm.